Hi, welcome to this uh, feedback session on uh, horn harbour cycles and some exercises. This video is a bit long, however, it's worthwhile sticking around because there'll be bits that you will uh, uh, get out of this. Um, uh, as I go through this video, we'll draw horn harbour cycles from scratch. We'll explain the different parts, go through the definitions, we'll calculate what we need to calculate and we'll learn how to do the calculation okay so the idea of this video is you can pause uh wherever you like you can sort of fast forward where you like uh to but stay with me because i'll be giving little nuggets of information to help you better understand these born haber cycles these are uh the first uh, three questions we had which i'm going to break down go through each one individually i've got an exam question at the end as well which you can practice and apply what you've learned throughout this video so depending on where, which level or stage you're at, you can, you can follow on or you can pause and have a go for yourselves or you can just uh, carry on listening where you think you're confident, pause from there. So let's begin with, just go through some basics uh, about Bourne Harbour Cycle. So let's have a look. So what is a Bourne Harbour Cycle? A Bourne Harbour Cycle looks like this. It practically always looks like this. There is no uh, difference to it. Uh, to any Bourne Harbour cycle, their format is like this. This is what it looks like. So let's go over the different parts. Uh, let's begin with the first part, uh, formation. That's at the bottom uh, and there's an arrow pointing downwards. Of course, formation is where something is made. The next uh, part to consider is the second level up and that's atomization. We've got bond dissociation, ionization energy. This could be first or second ionization energy it just depends on what sort of data they've given us so for example ionization energy could be split into two separate arrows both pointing up of course um it just depends on what sort of data for today's purpose we're just going to use one arrow then we've got the other side uh, minus e now that's electron affinity um and uh that again can be split into two parts or three parts even depending on which ions you're you're dealing with it just depends on the data they're giving you and then we've got last but definitely not least the lattice enthalpy now what i've done here is i've labeled these different parts of your born harbor cycle with letters now all the letters mean um all the letters are there it's just to show a, a, the principle of, of of hess cycle but before i go on to that it's Let's have a look at what's going on. If you've noticed, A, B, C are all positive values. E is a negative value, F is a negative value, and D is a negative value. I'll come to G later. Right, so if we think about what this is, these values are um, positive values and negative values. And essentially, what is a Hess cycle? A Hess cycle is, is an extension of... Um, Hess's law, uh, sorry, Born Harbour cycle is an extension of Hess's law. So Hess's law is no matter whichever route you take, um, it, uh, you will always end up in the same place. That's the idea of it. So what? What? Hess, so this extension of Hess's law is, if I add up all the parts to the red arrow, they'll equal to the green arrow, or the green arrow is equal to the red arrow. And that's all Hess's law is. Now, just quickly before I move on to the next part, G, I've just put G there for dissolving. Uh, and uh, just to remind us that uh, when we have um, ionic uh, compounds, and of course, born harbor cycles are only for ionic compounds, we can dissolve them. And they release exactly the same amount of enthalpy as the lattice enthalpy. The difference is it's a positive value as opposed to a negative value. And what's all this positive and negative about? Well, the idea is we have... Um, a Born Harbour cycle is essentially a graph. If I've got values going increasing, going up, so a positive correlation, it's a positive value. So if you notice the arrows pointing upwards, they're a positive value. Arrows pointing down are a negative value. And this can be put on a graph. And of course, like any graph, we have a start point. Where do we begin from? Well, zero is where we start from. And what's at zero? At zero is our elements in their standard states that's where we begin at ground zero as i call it and then of course formation is when the elements formed from the um uh, where, where the compound is formed the ionic compounds formed from the elements from ground zero uh let's let's have a look make this a little bit more useful what i've done is i've converted um 
this into an equation. We're going to we're not going to use those ABC letters, but what I've done is I've just substituted those letters uh, for the actual definitions, and I've color coded them for you. So what I've got here is uh, the brown. Uh, the, the orange numbers, sorry, will be the positive values, the blue numbers with the negative, and green for formation, even though that's a negative value, always is a negative value, um, I've left it as green not to cause any confusion because that is um, Hess's law. So if I add up all the orange parts and the blue parts, add them all together, it equals to the green part, remembering that formation is a negative value. Well, let's, let's put this to the test. Let's uh, have a look at the first example. Now, if you're feeling confident, um, you could stop here. Otherwise, stay with me and stop at any one of these points. My intentions for this question is to go through drawing and labeling the the, um, the cycle, the uh, Hess, uh, the uh, Bourne Harbor cycle, also known as a thermochemical cycle as well. Same thing. Um, so we're going to be uh, drawing and labeling this, allocating the numbers according to the definitions. Um, that's important. And then putting those numbers into that equation, into that mathematical equation uh, to calculate whatever they're asking uh, for. So in this case, let's begin. They're asking for the electron affinity of chlorine. So that's the part that we have to work out from the numbers we have. But before we could do that, we have to go through the parts. So let's have a look at our Born Harbor cycle for this. Remember, pause when you need to and uh, skip ahead to where you need to and see if you can get the same answer as myself. Right, let's have a look. So let's draw the Bourne Harbor cycle first. Here we go. This is the Bourne Harbor cycle. Remember, it has the same format, more or less. Maybe a couple of arrows here and there are added in, depending on what information they've given us. But the information we've given, we've got here is all that we need. Now, let's have a look. So let's have a look at the question. The question, uh, the, the Bourne Harbor cycle is for the formation of this substance down at the bottom here it's for this stuff called potassium chloride and if we look across at the table the last figure the last number standard enthalpy of formation that's what we look at of potassium chloride so how do we make potassium chloride is the question and this is very important because we've got one mole of potassium and one mole of chlorine well hang on potassium and chlorine they're elements of the period table well let's have a look at those in their standard states so uh so at ground zero, at level zero, which will be uh, uh, at the formation, uh, above the formation arrow, there we have potassium solid, so metal on the periodic table, plus half a mole of chlorine gas. That's a non-metal, of course. Now, if we look, does, it, does this equation balance? Well, I've got one potassium and I've got, well, half times two, which is one, chlorine so that balances this is really important because this is going to be applicable shortly let's have a look at the next stage the next so the next so if i want to go up from uh, potassium up to the next level uh, which is uh, uh, what what needs to happen is is atomization atomization of what that's the question and what do you do is is in a systematic way start off with the metal so if i atomize um, potassium because that's the metal remember the definition involves uh, lattice enthalpy uh, form of um, turning one mole of um, a substance into its gaseous form. There it is. The next level up is bond dissociation. And there we go. Look here. It's the chlorine here. Um, essentially, these Bourne Harbor cycles are a little game. Spot the difference. So you spot the difference between the levels, between the arrows, and that's all it is. What's different between each arrow? So let's try that again. So the next arrow, if I've got ionization, what does that mean? If you think back to that definition, it's a removal of electrons. You can only remove electrons from uh, metals, of course. So then there you go, one mole of electrons removed from here. Now, next one, uh, next arrow down is electron affinity. What is that? Well, that means accepting electrons. The only thing that can accept electrons are the non-metals. Okay, so there you go. There you go. I've got now uh, the ions in the gaseous state, and the only thing, only definition left after that is, of course, um, that is formation. And there we go. We formed our ionic compound. Right. So let's have a look on. So let's see what we've got. We've got um, the question. Then let's have a look uh, at the numbers and what the question asks us to do. So we went through, and we were. Uh, let's see what we have from the table. So we've got enth uh, standard enthalpy of formation of atomization. That, by the definition, is one mole. 
So here we go, we've got plus 90 kilojoules per mole. We can put that number in between those two lines, between A and B, if you like, off, off the table. Next, if we look at the, what's happening there, well, we've got this idea of uh, bond dissociation, but uh, let's have a look, bond dissociation, and we've got uh, 244 uh, kilojoules per mole. But hold on a second. We're but what's being, which bond is being broken here? It's actually the chlorine. How many moles have I got? Because this value applies for one mole. I don't have one mole there. In fact, I've got half a mole. So what do I do to that number? Well, if you said that you divide it by two, you'll be absolutely correct. Um, so the bond dissociation for this chemical reaction then is one to two. It's half what it says on the table because it's half a mole. Next, next stage, see what's happening here. What's the difference between uh, the arrow uh, at C um, from the uh, bottom of the arrow to the top of the arrow? Well, look what's happened. We've got uh, electrons being removed, uh, 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 mole of electrons being removed, forming a potassium ion, and there's one mole of that. So let's have a look at that. That's, that's going to be the um, first ionization of potassium, and that's by one mole. So that number is the same as the table. Then we've got the next part, E. Well, that's what the question was asking for us if we think back and if we look on the table, there is no um, value for this uh, electron affinity. Uh, let's look on then. So the next one is lattice and look, there it is lattice enthalpy. And again, by definition, it's one mole. So we can just use that minus 706 in this. We're missing a number of course, and that's for the formation, the, the stage D. Uh, uh, the formation, lattice enthalpy of formation. So looking down on the table, there it is, um, minus 436, right at the bottom. Right, now what do we do next? We then um, can go ahead and put this into our uh, standard formula. Again, remember, if you know what you're doing, then certainly pause the video, um, or you could stay with me while I go through this uh, calculation with you. So let's have a look. Let's put these numbers in. Bear me one moment. I'm going to do this live and show you how to put the numbers in or where the numbers go essentially is what we're talking about. So let's have a look. So the first number we had was 90 from our, our graph and from the table, we can look at either bond dissociation. Now remember, got to be careful here. We can't just pluck the number straight from the table here because this is per mole and we've had to use half mole. So the total, the, the value here is, um, 122. If I were you, and just for consistency sake, and particularly in any exam question, I suggest that you actually write in the sum. It will be safer for you. It shows the examiner you know what you're doing. Um, also, um, it will show that uh, that you've considered this calculation as well. So if you do make a mistake, the examiner could see what's gone on. So we're going to actually show the working out. I'll put it in brackets just to show that it's there before. And I'll write the answer underneath. Okay, brilliant. We'll go on to the next part. Uh, next part is ionization. Oh, straight off the table, this one. It's a positive value there. We're wanting to calculate X. Lattice enthalpy is a negative number. So just quickly looking down here, that's going to be equal to minus seven, zero, and six. That's equal to the formation, which is minus four, three, six. There's all the numbers now. Rearranging this mathematically, Best way to do this is step by step. What I suggest is add up all the orange parts, the sum of the orange parts first. Um, that's the safest way to do it. So using your calculator, work it out. And if I work it out, I get three, uh, sorry, six, three, two, added to then X, that X, of course, the unknown, what we want, added to minus seven, zero, six. Um, which is then equal to minus four, three, six. Next thing to do is we want to leave X on its own here, but we can't do that because we have numbers. So what we'll do is combine the numbers uh, to leave X by itself. So combining the numbers together, so 300, uh, 632 added to minus 706 leaves me with a value of minus 74, well, sorry, 74 added to X, which is all then still equal to one, four, three, six. Now what we do, and this is the best way of remembering this, because all of these uh, orange and yellows are added together to equal formation. Formation is always going to be the bigger value. 
So what do you do here is when we're transporting, if you like, uh, minus uh, 74 to the other side, what we do is we will subtract it because that's always going to be um, uh, minus four, 436 is always going to be the larger number. So because you're adding it to this uh, process, you put it over here. I'll just put minus 74 over this side and have, um, I'll put it in brackets so not to confuse anything on that side. Okay, so once I've done that, I've made, I've got then just to remove, uh, leave X on the other side into your calculator. If you put this calculation in, should get an answer of minus, well, let's have a look for myself, my calculator, make sure I've done this right. So I've got uh, 436 minus, minus 74. Uh, I've got a total of, I've got a mi uh, total of minus, 362 kilojoules per mole for the electron affinity and that's the answer for this one okay if you need to pause this video and go back over it by all means do so make sure you've got this right let's go on to the second example then our second example again very similar as before i'm going to go through uh, steps one two and three so feel free to pause the video have a go yourself see how it goes and then come back and check the answer. If you get stuck with anything, then play the video. I'll go through this again, step by step. So let's begin. First, we uh, have a look at a born harbor cycle. Cycle again, exactly the same format. Format does not change. We are forming sodium chloride this time. Sodium chloride uh, is formed from its elements in their constituent states, which is sodium and chlorine. Um, let's get those put in. Then there you go. And here we go, make sure we get this right. Um, it's always best to use um, the minimal, minimal amount of moles here. So that's why we use half a mole. If we had, if we multiplied, use multiples of this, it gets a little bit confusing. So it's easier to be uh, use a simplified uh, equation. So make sure you know how to um, use a simplified balanced equation. And the stoichiometry is absolutely balanced. Let's go through the next stage. So we're going to atomize the sodium atoms, turn them into gas. There we go, oops. And then we're gonna use, um, sorry, bond uh, dissociation. That's for the chlorine. I've made a little error here. That shouldn't be a positive. That should still be uh, a gas. And that should still be gas because we haven't ionized it yet. And I've left that there on purpose to see if you spotted it. And here we go. That's when we've, uh, uh, ionize the sodium from sodium ions to um, sodium plus ions. So be careful with that. I'll put it on there as purpose, but make sure you're aware of that. You've got to use your eyes. Remember the game will spot the difference. That's what you're doing. Then we've got the electron affinity. And what does that mean? Of course, electrons are taken up by our chlorine. And then we finally make our um, product. So let's go ahead and start putting those, inserting those numbers in and calculating these numbers as well. Be careful with the definitions, make sure um, we, it fits the bill. You've got to look at what's on the table to make sure you know what's going on. So first of all, sodium solid, go to sodium gas. That's per mole, that's 109. Uh, let's go ahead, put that number in, 109. Next we've got then is we've got um, sodium uh, gas going to sodium uh, no, nope, hang on. We've got to, according to the table, we're going to bond dissociate. So we're going to uh, the, break the chlorine now. Now be careful here. Look what it says on the table. We've got chlorine gas going to two moles of uh, chlorine atoms, and that is uh, at a value of two four two. Now look at how how difference is in our line. We're going from half a mole to one. So this is obviously you're making two moles here. So this value is doubled because it's two moles. We just want one mole. And according to our equation, we are uh, we started off with half a mole. So look, this starts off with one mole and it goes to two moles. We've started off with half a mole, goes to one mole. So think about what you're gonna do with that number. This is per mole, remember? And well, if you think about it, I want half of that value. So again, I'm gonna divide it by two. Then the next level, we're going uh, to then uh, um, remove a mole of electrons from the sodium atom. So um, that's um, first ionization energy. So if we look at the uh, look at the uh, the table again, look what's happening. Sodium goes to sodium plus ions. There it is. The value there is four nine four, and it's one mole again. So we don't have to uh, uh, consider that too much. Then we've got uh, electron affinity. If we look at the table, there you go one mole of electrons being found there. Remember this question at the beginning was asking to uh, work out the lattice energy. 
that's our x because we've got one mole so it's one lot of x if you like and then of course right at the bottom we've got our um formation and that's one molar formation so it stays the same by all the definitions right let's go ahead let's get this into our um into our uh, equation here into our uh, mathematical formula so let's put those numbers in remembering to be a bit cautious with of course um the one that we just the, we're not going to lift the same number from um from here so the first number was atomization there it is on the table exactly the same bond dissociation we've got to be really really careful here um because we've got a, a double the amount according to the table we'll divide that by two or multiply it by 0 0.5 then this comes in at a total of uh, one to one added to let's put that in brackets so we don't get too confused when we're adding up ionization energy that is as it is on the table which is 494 Plus then the electron affinity, which uh, according to the table, there it is. It's minus three, six, zero. Add that to X. That's what we want. It equals to the formation, which is minus four, one, one. Well, again, as before, true fashion, let's add up the uh, positives. Makes life a little bit easier. Remember, step by step and you will, won't make a mistake. Once you get good at these, um, then in the exams, you, you don't need to really put this step in. You can just use your calculator, it's not a problem, but good practice just to write it so you can spot the mistakes. So we've added up all the uh, orange boxes, the positive values, uh, we'll write out the equation just to show everyone that we know what's going on. Right, remember, we're gonna leave, try to leave the X on this side, we can't put too many numbers. So let's multiply the numbers together and uh, see what we get. So. Um, in this true fashion, um, let's add it all together. Okay, so I'm going to use my calculator this time just to make sure I've done things right. Um, uh, 494. Okay, so oops, I made a little error there. See, writing these things out is always worth it. And this is exactly my point writing these things out is really really important because just because i'm rushing through this this number value and the value of actually doing this is really really important so make sure that you write out all uh, that you need to then we'll do the next bit we'll add this to the minus three six zero and that gives us a total of three six four added to x is equal to the minus four eleven now we're going to leave X on its, uh, by itself over here. So remember, as before, we're going to transport, if you like, uh, the 364 over to the other side. So uh, we're going to leave the 411 where it is because we're using the opposite operation here. It's minus and minus that 364. X then is going to be equal to, well, let's get my calculator. Let's do it the long way around. Make sure that we are being consistent here put this into a calculator then the total value is seven seven five that's your value for um the lattice enthalpy of this you know you'll be right because of course look out for that sign those values for lattice enthalpy are always negative like the formation always negative Okay, once again, stop the video if you need to, so you can check through what's going on. Let's go to uh, question number three, part A. Again, we're calculating the electron affinity of chlorine from the following data. That's missing, um, but we've got the, all the other bits. So once again, we're going to go through uh, the same steps again. Um, so here we go. There's the cycle again. Um, let's go ahead and fill this in. If you're a bit more confident now, pause the video. Have a go yourself. Right, so let's go ahead and, and put the things in. Remember, we're forming calcium chloride, uh, ClCl2, and that comes from obviously elements in their standard states. That's calcium and chlorine. Um, so calcium solid, chlorine gas. There we go. Now, let's have a look what how the indirect route, according to Hass. Let's have a look. So wh where do we go from here? Well, it's the atomization. So we turn uh, uh, calcium into a gas, leave chlorine alone. Then the next level, bond dissociation, it's the chlorine. This time we've got uh, um, one mole going to two moles. Okay, so we're going to two moles here. And uh, let's have a look. So then, then uh, the next level we have is, um, oops, sorry, gone the wrong way, um, atomization. And this is both one and 
uh, uh, atomization, apologies, uh, one and two ionization. Okay, so in this is the total figure that they've given us, but they can split this arrow into first ionization energy and then another ionization energy. But the numbers that they've given us is one whole number. So we could just use that, it's not a problem. Electron affinity, of course, again, they've done the same here. It's only one number, but they can have two different arrows to represent electron affinity. It's not, it's not a problem, but they've only given us one, so that's fine. There it is. Um, or th th there's only one arrow uh, for this because um, we don't need to split that one. Then we've got uh, forming the uh, the compound now in the ionic compound. There it is. So we were looking for um, X, and let's have a look. So let's pop the numbers in 190. Then again, now we've got to be a bit careful here. Look what we've got that for uh, level B. If we look here, we've got uh, starting with uh, Cl2 goes to two moles of Cl. And if we look at the table, we've got half a mole going to Cl. So if we think about what we've done here um, and the number that's in that table, you are actually going to need double because you're going to need double of that value. So the sum then is going to be uh, twice that it says on the table. So be mindful of these tables. Do not be robotic. List, uh, look, look at the tables and look at your born uh, Haber cycle, see what's needed. Then we go on to the next uh, level, which is C, and that's off the table. That's a full amount there. And then that's what we want. Now, be careful here. It's not just X, it's 2X. Why is it 2X? Because I've got two electrons which need to be taken up by the um, um, the non-metal here. And of course, true fashion, and always write this down, oil rig. What's happening to the chlorine? Two moles of chlorine there. It's gained, it's been reduced. So chlorine's been reduced to chloride. Okay, fantastic. Let's move on. And then we've got the last value, of course, for the lattice enthalpy. Oh, second to last uh, 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 on that side of our table. And then we've got the formation as well. Right, let's go ahead. Again, if you want to pause the video, by all means do so. But I'm going to uh, apply this to a mathematical equation. Let's have a look. So we are uh, going to put these numbers in. So, right, here we go. So the first one is atomization. So looking off the table, 190 added to, remember the bond dissociation again, be careful with this. We're using the double the amount on the table according to our cycle. Then we've got ionization, which is 1730. And um, we've got uh, electron affinity. That's what we're looking for, in fact. Um, yep, and then we've got lattice. I've swapped them around a little bit. It makes no difference. You can do that. I'm just going to put these in brackets, minus. So lattice enthalpy was this. This is then all equal to the formation, which was minus 795. Excellent. Now let's again do the same steps again. Let's add up all the numbers, uh, the, posit the, brown, uh, the orange boxes there, all the positive numbers, and you should come up with this value added to minus... 2184, which is then equal to 2x, which is equal to minus 795. Right, again, let's leave uh, 2x on its own. Can break these things down. So I'm going to get my calculator and show this thoroughly. So 2162 uh, added to minus 2184. Again, total of minus uh, 22 that in brackets that is equal to 2x which is equal to minus 795 oops 795 again we're going to um oops what have i put 2x there for let me just get rid of this one apologies too many 2x's on there don't need it just yet we will need it now because we're going to have 2x on its own here and that's going to be equal to minus 795 added to minus 22. Once you do this and put it into your calculator, 2x is going to be equal to minus 773. But that's a 2x and we just want x on its own. So we're going to divide this number by 2. And the total value then is minus 3 
0.86.5 kilojoules per mole. There's your answer um, for electron affinity for this question. Now, there was a part B to this question as well. Um, there it is. Now, again, uh, same idea, but this time, let's have a look. Here. It says use, uh, use the reactions from above to calculate standard enthalpy formation of this time calcium chloride, where calcium is in the one plus state. Previously, we've done calcium in the two plus state. So oxidation state of two plus, but we want to uh, calculate for one plus. So again, we can use some of the numbers from the original table and calculating from uh, part A, the calculation from part A, we can use that, but they have to give us extra information in order to calculate this. And that's in the second table at the bottom there, because we're going to use only the first ionization energy, not the one and first and second ionization energy, because we want calcium to be in the one plus state. And then of course, um, calcium plus and chloride minus are going to come together. We don't want the original one where it was calcium two plus plus two moles of chloride atoms makes calcium chloride where uh, uh, calcium was in oxidation state plus two. So that's the extra information. We've got to sub that in as we go through. So here we go. Let's go for all our our uh, Born Harbour cycle. Remember, if you're confident, then do feel free to pause. But here we go. Let's go through this. Remember, we're making calcium chloride this time, oxidation state plus one of calcium. So we start from one mole of calcium solid and, and half a mole of chlorine gas as before. But atomization, it's only one mole of chlorine. But, but bond dissociation again. Now, look, we've got to use the table again for this. Be careful what the values are saying. It's half a mole and on the table is half a mole. So that's quite good. So it's just straight to one mole. Then we've got first ionization energy and it's only plus one this time. And then we've got uh, electron affinity. There it is. And then we've got uh, level F, which is the um, formation of our product lattice enthalpy there. And they wanted us to calculate X for this one, the lattice enthalpy of formation. Um, uh, formation, the uh, enthalpy of formation here. So let's go ahead and do the, do the same thing. Let's put the numbers in. Now, again, we're going to use both tables. Now, be careful, select the correct numbers from each table by looking at each level, each step. So the first one's 190 as from the original table. The second one is 1 to 1 as from uh, the first table, the original one. Now, be careful, calcium 1 plus, uh, you make calcium um, gas to calcium one plus ions that's going to be on the second table 590 then we've got electron affinity that's from your part a that you calculated because we uh, calcium is um we worked out for one mole of calcium uh uh, uh calcium sorry uh, chlorine atoms in gaseous state that collect one mole of electrons so we can just use that number directly from part a then we've got um from the second table, minus seven, uh, minus seven six zero. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, put this into our equation. Let's see what we get. Um, okay, so so the numbers are. Let's see. We've got one ninety as before. One ninety added to the bond dissociation straight off the table again. One two one plus ionization. Uh, be careful here but we've already solved that problem. That's from the second table. Electron affinity, we've got to take this from our part A. That should be a point. Plus the lattice um, enthalpy, uh, enth uh, lattice enthalpy, which is uh, 760. That's all equal to X. So let's do as before, good practice. Let's add up all the uh, positive values, the orange boxes. They come in at a total of 901. Added to then 386.5, oops, six, which is, um, oh, that should be a minus, shouldn't it? Ooh, look, minus. It's a blue box, isn't it? Minus. Added to uh, minus 760, still equal to x. Then um, let's, uh, well, add these all up. And if you Add 109 plus minus 386.5 uh, plus minus 760. Add it all together, you'll get a total of, you should get a total of 
which is equal to x. So that's your answer. That's the answer for this question. Okay, again, go back over this if you're not sure. Uh, a little bit more involved compared to the last time. Right, so we've got two bond enthalpies. Now, there was another part to this question, and it said calculate the enthalpy of formation. We've done that for um, one plus uh, calcium. And it says, hence explain why calcium um, in the oxidation, oxidation state plus two is formed in preference to calcium chloride. And we're talking about energetically, of course. You could look at this question and say, well, calcium is in, is in, um, is in group two on the periodic table, so it will form two plus ions. But it's not asking you that. It's asking you why does it form calcium, uh, CaCl2, as opposed to Cl, CaCl. That's the question. So why does that happen? So you've got to give reasons for. And the way to look at this is look at the values. From both the, the working out we've done from before, um, from part A, three part A, you've got minus 246.5. And then from the data, the table that they gave you, you've got this value. The way to think of this is if something is exothermic, it'll go from a higher energy level to a lower energy level. So the elements here are always in a higher energy level compared to the products. Um, so the reactants are always higher than, than the products. So if we think about things become a lot more stable if they lose a lot of energy, it's a bit like gravitational potential energy. So if we think of this like, if we think about, think about um, energy being lost, the more energy you lose, the uh, more stable it becomes. Um, so for, for instance, uh, the energy, the potential energy here is a lot, is is greater than here. However, the potential energy here is the same level, of course, because they're the same things, but it's a lot less down here. So this is a lot more stable. So the answer to the question is, I will draw this as an arrow. This is an exothermic arrow showing this amount of energy leaving. However, this one loses far greater energy. So this is actually gone for gone to a more stable place than this so in terms of energetic explanations or reasons why this is formed and this is not formed this is the reason calcium uh, calcium cl2 is far more stable it's in a more stable position compared to calcium cl ca cl okay so that's the explanation for that um Right, let's just recap over everything we've done today. We've done quite a lot. Um, so we've gone through uh, drawing and labeling um, these uh, thermochemical cycles using chemical equations, allocating numbers according to the definitions, okay, and multiplying the values where appropriate according to those definitions in terms of moles. We've then rearranged the mathematical equation to then give us the answers. With all this in mind, let's have a go at it exam question here. Here's a typical exam question. I uh, can't remember which year it's from. Um, let's have a look here. Um, good good skills uh, exam tips here to consider. So let's have a look. So we're going to have a, have a pause of the video. Have a look at this cycle. It's Born Harbour cycle for the formation of cesium chloride. There it is. Again, look. Look at the different levels familiarize yourself with this, decode this before you move on to the actual question. Look at what's happening. Look at what's missing. Uh, are, are the correct parts in the right place? Do they look familiar? And if you look at this breakdown, they do. Let's actually look at the question now. It says, give the names of the enthalpy changes represented by delta H1, 2, and 5. So delta H1, let's have a look. Let's play that game again. Spot the difference. What's the difference at the before that arrow and after that arrow. Well, before I've got elements in their standard states, and then I've got um, calcium chloride formed from, from its elements in the constituent states. So that in fact is, that's right. If you said that's the enthalpy of formation, you would be correct, but you won't get the marks. The correct answer is, this is the um, enthalpy of formation of cesium chloride you must write that part in, otherwise you do not get the marks. Okay, so you've got to be very, very uh, clear about this. Uh, a lot of uh, questions will ask you to add that in as well. Therefore then, delta H2 is what? Delta H2 is the 
uh, let's see the difference, spot the difference. So before the arrow, after the arrow, well, the only thing that's changed is cesium is turned into gas. So that's atomization of, that's right, cesium solid. Fantastic. And then um, delta H5, what's going on here? Well, before the arrow, after the arrow, chlorine has accepted a mole of electrons, come to become a mole of chloride ions. Therefore, that is uh, electron affinity of chlorine. Okay, and that's uh, three marks. Thank you very much. Nice and easy. The second part to this question was actually, there you go, calculate the value of the lattice um, enthalpy, enthalpy, delta H6, for, for my, um, or lattice enthalpy of uh, calcium chloride. And here are the numbers. We can go through this calculation as well. If you want to pause the video and try it for yourself, by all means, go for it. This is what it's all about. Put, put into practice what you have. So if I just quickly label these, just to make life easier, one, two, three, four, and five is what we need. And we have six down here. Remember, um, these numbers are have already adjusted for the moles for you. So you don't have to adjust for the moles. It's already been done. OK, so you do not have to. All you do is put the equations in, uh, put the numbers into the equation in the mathematical equation. So I'll start off with 79, 71, 9 plus uh, 3, uh, 7, 6 added to one, two, one, um, added to minus three, six, four, added to then, uh, we'll call that X, just for consistency sake. And that all equals to minus 433. There we go. Um, I should come over a little bit, shouldn't I? As we've done before, good practice is let's just add up all the positive numbers. Okay, I'm doing this in my calculator as well. So I've got a total of, on this side, five, seven, six. And I'm gonna add that to minus three, six, four. I'm gonna add that to X, and that still equals four, three, three. Now let's get rid of those numbers then to leave X on its own over here. So then good practice again, let's show our working out so then we know uh, where we're at with this so i've got a total of 212 added to x equals minus 433 three. um let's take the let's leave x on its own on this side and take uh, 212 over to the other side so it's minus 433 three, minus 21 uh, right x then is going to be equal to let's have a look minus 433 three. Total value then is six, four, five. That's your answer. Kilojoules per mole. Two marks. Thank you very much. Absolutely worth it. Because um, usually they normally go on to these, uh, the next sort of piece of information. There was a part C to this question. And here for three marks, sorry, can't see it on the screen, but for three marks, um says explain why so give reasons why now uh, the enthalpy change represented by delta h3 let's stop let's have a look at delta h3 what is it um let's make the screen a bit bigger so you can see delta h3 is this one so spot the difference well cesium gas uh, is going to cesium plus ions uh chlorine is still the same there's a mole of electrons there right okay so it looks like this is um first uh, ionization energy okay of cesium so it's lost um some electrons and then it says has a higher so uh, uh, so this value delta h3 has a higher uh, a lower magnitude size for cesium than it does for sodium hmm so let's have a look now this sounds quite interesting so let's see we've got two elements um we've got cesium and we've got sodium here so why is so if we interpret this question decode it what is it saying it's saying that um the, so this one cesium has a lower magnitude than sodium so sodium has a greater value than cesium that's what it's saying for the first ionization of course now why could that be well let's think about this and going back to another topic that you've done previously in atomic structure we think about first ionization energies there if we put this 
think of an unusual periodic table in the exam. Sodium is higher in the periodic table compared to um, cesium there. And if we look, the atomic radius of sodium is far, far smaller than cesium. If we think about the electrons on the outer shell, X, let's call them X, there they are, compared to the nucleus of each one. Let's see what's happening. As we go down group one, because that's what they're in, the um, atomic number is increasing, true. The number of electrons is increasing, true. The number of shells increasing, tr true. Uh, shielding increasing, true. First, the, the, the energy needed to remove electrons from the outside decreasing, true. And that's what they've said to us. So we've got to put this into words. So what's happening? Well, first thing we need to state is uh, explain why. Well, the electrons in the outer shell uh, of cesium require less energy to remove because the effective nuclear charge from the nucleus to uh, the outer shell electrons is weaker. Why is it weaker? Is because cesium has a larger um, uh, atomic radius. Also, there's more shielding that's causing that uh, less effective um, experience on those electrons. Let's have a look at the mark scheme, see what it says. Well, there you go, we cover the bases. Cesium has a lot larger uh, radius, bigger atom. Um, it's got more uh, orbitals, therefore more shielding, less powerful traction to the outer shell electrons, therefore easily removed in cesium compared to sodium. Hopefully that was uh, very useful for you. Um, please do feel free to stop the video and go through it again to make sure you know this. And the best thing is to apply your knowledge and practice these things as you go through.